Okay, I can teach you how a hydrofoil works in just five words, the pressure and the push. Picture this, you're on the beach watching a mate pump their foil out to link wave after wave, endless glides, crazy speeds, gravity defying fun. Then somebody next to you asks the question, how does that even work? Maybe you've tried answering before, and I know I certainly have. And what happens? Well, I end up going into way too much detail. I feel like I need a whiteboard. and Before long, I'm tripping over theories, some of which aren't even correct. So that's why I think this question deserves a simple and clear answer. So in this video, I'm going to show you the way that I explain it now. It's straightforward, it's condensed, and it's correct. And if you like a bit more depth, well, stick around into the end because I'm going to share an incredible tip that I picked up about the actual lift equation and something that might even make you a better foiler too. So whether you're after a quick beach friendly explanation or you want to understand your foil a little bit better, well, let's dive in. So before we get into the nuts and bolts, let me give you a little bit of my background. So I'm a professional pilot and I have been for over 20 years. I spent most of that time in the military flying the Apache AH Mark I helicopter. After that, I moved into civilian flying, flying both fixed wing and rotary. So for over two decades, I've been living and breathing aerodynamics. Yes, it's not hydrodynamics, but the principles are similar. They're both derivatives of fluid dynamics and practically, well, the theories hold true across both mediums, air and water. Look, I'm not claiming to be a world leader on the subject, but I do have a sound understanding and I've picked up some cool tips along the way that I'd like to share with you. It's also worth noting that this subject is deeply complicated and I'm going to have to make some simplifications, but I will remain true to the principles throughout. Okay, let's get stuck in. So what we really need is a simple, clear way to explain how a hydrofoil works. Something so straightforward that you could explain it to a 10 year old or to a stranger on the beach in about 20 seconds. And beyond that, if you actually understand the principles properly, it helps you to become a better rider. You will start to see why changing foil size matters, why speed is everything, and why these tiny adjustments to your stance make such a big difference. Here's the tricky part. How can we condense a subject that people literally base their PhD on? Well, the answer lies in basic principles, and to be exact, two basic principles. So here's where one of my old Apache instructors comes in. He was one of those rare teachers who could make the most complex things sound dead simple. He used to say, if you really understand it, you should be able to explain it to a child. So keeping with that analogy, I brought it down to just two concepts and I call them the pressure and the push. That's it. Forget about the rest. These two ideas are all you need. So let's start with the pressure. And this is all thanks to both the shape and the angle of the foil. So as it moves forward, water is accelerated over the curved top surface and it's slowed down on the underside. This speed change inversely impacts the pressure between those two areas. And we have this high pressure on the slow underside and low pressure on this fast upper surface. And that's a key concept to remember. The famous mathematician and physicist Daniel Bernoulli first coined this concept back in 1738, which states an increase in the speed of a fluid is accompanied by a decrease in pressure and vice versa. That pressure difference literally sucks and pushes the foil upwards as the fluid tries to re-establish this equilibrium from high to low pressure. Now, unsurprisingly, that's not all that's going on there. Let me explain the push. So as the foil slices through the water, it's not just sitting there, it's actually deflecting water downwards due to the angle and shape of the underside or high pressure side, as we've just explained. This is where Newton's third law kicks in. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in essence, if you push water down, the foil gets pushed up. Another great analogy for this is the hand out of the car window trick. If you shove your hand out of the window 
at an angle as you're moving along, well, you'll feel the push. So when you put the two together, the pressure differential from Bernoulli and the upward reaction from Newton, well, you get the lift. And it's enough lift to raise your whole board, foil, body out of the water. Now, if you want to geek out just a little, there's one formula pilots know like the back of their hand, and that's the lift equation. Lift equals the coefficient of lift times half rho v squared s. Now I'm getting flashbacks because during flight school, you literally had to stand up and recite this every morning at roll call. And there were extra duties for those that got it wrong. And trust me, uh, I had a few of those come my way. Anyway, it explains exactly how the variables can impact the amount of lift created. Look, at first glance, it looks pretty scary, but here's what it means in plain English, and more importantly, how it impacts you as a foiler. CL is the coefficient of lift. This is the wing's shape and angle of attack. So either that high aspect downwind foil or the stubby surf wind. And of course, you can control the angle of attack with your body weight. Rho is the density of the fluid. Of course, we can't really change this on any given session, but interestingly, water is way denser than air, which is why, with all things being the same, foils can be much smaller than aeroplane wings for the same amount of lift. V squared is velocity squared. If you go twice as fast, you don't just double your lift, you quadruple it. And this is an indicator of the importance of speed in foiling. Remember, speed is your friend. And S is the size of the wing. Bigger foil, more lift, but remember, more drag also. And this is where it gets cool for us foilers. Every time you change your foil size, tweak your angle or adjust your speed, you're literally manipulating this equation in real time. I challenge you to go out and experiment with this, but remember to only change one thing at a time. So the next time you're on the beach and somebody asks, how do those things work? You don't need to give a physics lecture. Instead, just explain the pressure and the push. Faster water on top creates that low pressure and water deflected down pushes you up. That's lift, simple as that. And hey, if you found this breakdown helpful, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Perhaps check out my video on learning how to surf foil too. It helps me making more of these videos and also support Bear Cottage, the children's hospice based here in Sydney. So until next time, I'll see you on the water again soon.